Hi, everyone. Welcome to Make Your Mark, a workshop about drawing and finding delight and inspiration in everyday objects. Also, I want to encourage you to grab some paper, grab some pens, grab some pencils, and let's just do some free drawing while I am speaking. Let's loosen up and get lost in the marks as I talk with you about the benefits of making marks. So my name is Kate Bingham and Burt, and I'm coming at you from Portland, Oregon, where I am a professor of graphic design at Portland State University. I'm also an illustrator and the owner of Outlet, which is where I am sitting at right now. Outlet is my community print studio. It's an event space and a zine library, as well as my illustration studio. Pre-quarantine times, we would host a variety of art workshops every week. And now in quarantine times, we have taken the workshop party to the internet. So hello, hi, um, I am very excited to be sharing with you this drawing workshop slash pep talk in hopes that it will get you inspired to make. But first, just a little bit of context for me and why you might even wanna be listening to the words coming out of my mouth for the next couple minutes. Um, I grew up in a family of artists. My mom and dad were weavers and my grandma and grandpa were illustrators. One of my absolute favorite spaces growing up was my grandmother's studio. She was a prolific children's book illustrator and drew over a thousand titles during her 55 year career. Um, her name is Nan Pollard, in case anybody wants to Google her. She's incredibly talented. Um, I feel very fortunate to have grown up in such a supportive and creative environment, but I was also intimidated like wild by the talent that surrounded me. Today, most people know me as an illustrator. Currently, my desk is piled high with pens and paper, and I spend my days happily drawing. But if you knew me 15 years ago, you would know that I absolutely hated to draw. I was creative, but drawing was my least favorite way to create. Like most people, I loved drawing when I was little, but around fourth grade, my love for making marks was absolutely destroyed by the fear of making a mistake. This way of communicating for myself was zapped from my visual vocabulary, and I looked for other ways to express myself. Okay, so when did I decide to draw? Zoom forward to my mid-20s when I racked up $25,000 of credit card debt and felt totally powerless when these machine-generated statements would land with a big thud in my mailbox every single month. It was then when I decided I would try to draw again, but as a form of punishment. I decided to draw all of my credit card statements until they were paid off. When I started my credit card project, I hated drawing so much that it was a form of punishment. Drawing my credit card statements was the equivalent of writing, I will not be stupid with money over and over again on a chalkboard. This project wasn't fun at first, but that also wasn't the point. However, as this project progressed and my debt went down, I actually started to take pleasure in making repetitive lines, drawing type, and focusing on the subject at hand. I had accidentally stumbled into the joy of what I now know is called meditative drawing. Two years into the credit card project, I wanted to draw something else in addition to my frustrating credit card statements. And that is where my daily purchase drawing project started, um, which actually is, is celebrating its 15th year anniversary on February 5th, because I started this project um, February 5th, 2006. So um, woo, party. Anyway, in this new project, I started small. I drew one black and white line drawing of something that I purchased every day. These drawings were simple and of everyday objects that I happened to purchase on that day. This process made me incredibly aware of how much passive consumption occurs in our daily lives and how little attention we pay to the everyday items. And I kept with this daily project and I drew and I drew and I drew and over 4,000 daily drawings later, I can safely say that I love to draw. My early drawings were not confident However, I kept going and I kept sharing these. I, I put these online. I, I had zine subscriptions. I mailed them out to people. I used sharing as a way to keep myself accountable and to keep myself going. 
My style remained wonky, but it became a confident wonk. I was documenting my life through my stuff and I became hooked. And this daily drawing project is now 15 years old. It led to my career in illustration and lots of other ways of making. Because drawing is at the root of everything that I do now. It all starts with making marks. And here is where we are at with this workshop, with why I'm having you kind of like just make lines and marks with your pencils right now. I really think that anyone can enjoy the benefits of cultivating a habit of making marks and documenting the everyday around you. But really, again, the hard part is how do we start this? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about illustrator and educator and all around queen, Linda Berry. Linda Berry says that drawing is a language. It's hard to understand what that really means until you have spoken and listened to it enough in a reliable and regular way. Starting a drawing practice is the best way to begin a reliable, regular way. I believe that everyone is capable of communicating fluently in this visual language. And also creating something from nothing makes us feel productive. And that helps us feel good about ourselves. Um, I love those endorphins. And also being present in the moment and focused during a drawing session, again, that is meditation. That quiet and calm and clear feeling that I get while drawing is why I do it every day. My inspiration for drawing is really rooted in ordinary objects. I want to share with you some examples of prompts that I have employed in the past. Feel free to use these ideas, but also search for content that is meaningful to you. Telling your story makes this process so much more rich and you will be so much more invested in the outcome. It's important to cultivate your own voice. So I love the stories behind objects. And many of my drawing projects are rooted in asking other people to share the stories behind their stuff. This is an ongoing project where I draw other people's mixtapes. I love asking people in real life and people online for images of their objects to draw. Usually my drawings end up in me either making an addition of zines to distribute or as prints to share. Sharing is a huge component of why I make. I also find inspiration in what people are throwing away. I like to memorialize these items right before they end up gone forever. I have an ongoing series where I paint objects that I am either giving away or throwing away. I also turn to Craigslist for inspiration. I look for patterns to emerge and then I dive in and draw. Craigs Craigslist bikes, Craigslist travel trailers. Craigslist is a dang minefield of inspiration. So many stories, so many questions. Um, it's, it's just, again, I could, I could talk for an hour and a half about how much I love Craigslist, but I'm not going to, but use it as a tool for drawing inspiration. It's, it's so rich with it. Watch out. I also love drawing people's collections. This is a snippet of my husband Clifton Burt's bread tag collection. And then also, we already have collections. The everyday coffee mug. Open up your cabinet and look at all those coffee mugs. Virginia is for lovers, the beautiful script of the original pantry, and don't forget that handmade one in the back that your aunt created while enrolled in an intro to ceramics class. Draw them. When you draw these mugs or these bread tags or tchotchkes on Craigslist or your soon to be trash, you're not only drawing an object, you're memorializing the story behind it. I have found this to be an incredibly powerful documentation tool. Okay. So let's turn to ourselves. What's your story? What do you want to tell? I hope that your hands are still moving and that you're getting warmed up because this is a good place to start if you haven't, okay? So get a blank sheet of paper, again, pen or pencil and any other mark making tool that you'd like to try. And these are some of my favorite art supplies, okay? Um, you'll notice that, that not all of them are traditional drawing supplies. You can draw with tape. You can make images with collage and clip art. You can make marks with stamps. Making is whatever you decide to make of it. So making marks is a great way, a low pressure way to warm up. It's always good to stretch before working out. 
And making marks is the same thing as stretching before a big workout. So let's make some marks with these art supplies. Let's start creating the beginnings of our mark making library. Again, you can start your mark making library by just taking a blank sheet of paper or a page in your sketchbook and fill it with squares and then fill those squares with marks and lines and patterns. The image on the right is an example of my mark making library. Feel free to copy some of these marks if you don't know where to start. Just draw lines, draw squiggles, draw dots, have a whole field of asterisks, put down some wacky scallops. Um, again, you're building an inventory that you're gonna be drawing upon later. So as we warm up with these marks, be thinking about the everyday object that you might like to draw. Be thinking about an object that has been important to you today, something that might help you tell the story of your day. As you are making marks and warming up, let your brain think about that object. Think about the meaning. Think about how it can tell the story of you. I have always found a blank piece of paper a very intimidating thing. And a fresh sketchbook falls into the same category. So much possibility, but the blankness is terrifying. But by building a library of marks and creating an ever-growing inventory of drawing ideas, that really can make a scary blank sheet of paper way less scary. And speaking of ideas, let's talk about some possible ideas for your drawing as we move into the next phase of this workshop. I'm constantly jotting down drawing ideas to save for later. Just as I love making a library of marks, having a library of ideas to access makes developing a daily drawing practice much more accessible. It turns something that might be stressful, like coming up with ideas, into something enjoyable. Drawing for me has turned into my daily zone of relaxation, which is something we all need more of these days. The feeling of making something is also very satisfying, especially during these days when time feels fake and lots of things feel out of your control. At least you have control over what you put in your dang sketchbook. So let's take some samples from our mark making library experiments and apply them to our everyday object drawing. As we begin, I encourage you to experiment. Don't overthink, please resist the urge to erase and crumple up your paper and start over again. Be sure to find the good stuff in what you might think of as mistakes. My whole drawing style is based on not starting over and just going where the wonky line takes me. And just to show you how you might apply one of your marks to inform this drawing you are working on, here is a mark here is a mark for my mark making library. And here it is directly applied as a pattern in a drawing of a plant that is sitting on my desk. And now I wanna show you how many of my marks are applied to an entire series of my houseplant portraits. So even if we can't finish our drawings in the next few minutes, let's keep working on them. Don't cast it aside. Use it as a document to remember this day. So let's also, let's just draw the, Let's draw the object and maybe write a few lines about its meaning. Maybe jot down a few things that can't be seen. I know that drawing can be intimidating, but for now, let's remember to lower the expectation bar. It's, Im it's important to not stress about this. Remember, you're not being graded on this. It's all about experimentation. Does it have to be an accurate drawing? No way, you're making a drawing, not a photograph. You get to pick its style and which details get attention and which details don't. It's also important that you are drawing for you, but it's also fun to share what you are making, especially if you find yourself enjoying the lines and marks and ideas that you are communicating through your pen and paper. If you feel like drawing your objects could become a regular practice, something you do daily or weekly, make a loose set of rules, pick a consistent medium, get a dedicated sketchbook, and make a routine around it. Setting aside a regular half hour, a regular 15 minutes, every week, every day, to just look, draw, and write. Perhaps you share these drawings. Perhaps you don't. Perhaps you, you know, break some of the rules. You know, that's okay. Because remember, this is supposed to be for you. And if other people get something out of it, that's nice too. 
So figuring out a framework for making a creative practice while we travel the ups and downs of the world really helps bring order to the chaos as well. Working on a daily habit is actually really great for people who feel like they are too busy with literally everything. But cultivating a drawing habit will make you saner and happier, I swear. Setting aside 15 minutes a day to document your day can be done. And making for yourself can fit into even the most wild schedules. Because making things makes you feel good and we need all of the good feelings that we can get these days. Okay, now let's keep drawing. Thanks everyone.